Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to day four of the Learning Redefined Conference hosted by Shobi. This is Shobi's first ever conference, um, and it has been a phenomenal success over the last four days, certainly. Um, and also, last three days, and today is our fourth day. Um, today is a real focus um, around independent schools. So we've got teachers, we've got school leaders, um, we've even got a panel session um, this uh, this afternoon as well. Um, for those of you that don't know what Shobi is, Shobi is a hybrid learning platform. It's helping over 3 million educators globally, kind of really focused around providing richer, deeper, more personalized feedback. Um, Shobi's been working with educators for uh, almost 10 years now and has a number of really powerful partnerships with other educational applications as well. But getting on to today's session, um, I'm kind of quite privileged, a friend, a colleague, um, a fellow Apple Distinguished Educator um, and a, a school leader. We have John Jones with us. Um, I'm kind of uh, quite, I've been looking forward to this particular session because um, it's been a while since John uh, and I have kind of connected uh, and, and spoken. Um, but John is a director of innovation at the family of four RGS Worcester schools. Um, I'm going to be picking his brains today about how he's kind of working to improve outcomes, what it's been like through COVID, the whole strategy piece. But really, um, there's. I also kind of want to know about his journey, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll kind of go through that. But there's some something really interesting that I definitely need to pick his brains about, yeah. And that is the fact that before teaching, John, you worked for Bernie Eccleston at Formula One. Correct, I did. Yes, many moons ago. Um, <laughs> it's not as exciting as it sounds, to be honest with you. I um I worked at the uh, offices in in Knightsbridge. Uh, as a statistical administrator, uh, and I, I had my own office, which was remarkable for for me at the age of twenty. But at the same time, all I all I did really was watch the the same Grand Prix about ten times in different languages, and and look out for <laughs> breaches of copyright. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it got quite tedious after the, the ninth time of seeing the same car going round and round. Um, however, the, uh, you know, there were some perks as well. We got to go to the Grand Prix at Silverstone and. Uh, uh, you know, you, you met some interesting characters within that role as well. Wow, wow, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so you, you tell me about your kind of journey. How have you ended up here? Where have you worked before? Because, I mean, you sent me this information, but I didn't realize that we actually met um, in 2010 at ESA Academy uh, when I was there doing the whole iPod deployment thing. I mean, we did have a lot of footfall. We covered a lot of ground, but I, I didn't realize that we, that, that was the first time we'd actually met. Yeah, no, totally. So that was that was when I, as you said, worked at the International School of Monaco, uh, and uh, before that, I was a primary school teacher in, in just outside Brighton, which is where I'm from, and uh, worked in uh, what in year four, year five, and year six, and uh, was given the ICT coordinator role uh, primarily because I could use PowerPoint, uh, and <laughs> at the time that was seen as quite uh, an unusual skill. So we had the typical laptop deployment, about 10 laptops to share between 150 children. And uh, they tended not to work very well. But when they did, you could do some cool stuff with them. And uh, I, that ICT coordinatorship role continued at the International School of Monaco, where uh, I, I started work in 2008. And that coincided with the, the digital revolution, if you like, that the, the, the iPhone, the iPad, all these things started appearing around that sort of time. And because of the, uh, the demographics of Monaco, we were able to get a one-to-one -one iPad deployment started pretty early, in about 2011. Uh, and before, but before we did that, we wanted to go and look at other schools that were doing similar sorts of things. So we went on a tour around Europe and went to Stavanger. Uh, we went yeah, to- Norway, London. yeah. But most glamorous of all was Bolton. And, um, <laughs> And in, and in Bolton, we, we came to ESSA on the recommendation of Apple Europe, and they took us, well, you, they took us to, to meet you uh, uh, and uh, saw what you were doing with iPods, and it blew our minds because uh, it was, it was you know, unheard of at the time to use those devices in the way that you were using them and to see them in action at a school that, again, had very different demographics to those in Monaco, but at the same time that the children were, were, were using these devices and using them in a way that, was you know, without sounding cliche, was redefining learning. I think I think um, 
I don't think I've ever heard Bolton and glamorous in the same sentence, but um, yeah, I mean, it was it was uh, certainly a pioneering kind of time then uh, with educators from everywhere looking at the possibilities and so on. And to be honest with you, um, there was a lot of things that went wrong and we kind of learned from that. And there was a lot of sharing and all those kinds of things that were going on, which was uh, pretty, pretty fantastic in many ways. So. Tell me a little bit about RGS. What's that like? You're a family of schools. You're, you're the director of innovation across those schools. Um, you know, what's the environment like? What kinds of things are you doing there? You know, um, share, share, share that kind of story uh, with us. Sure. So after ISM, I went to work in Kings Rochester uh, and was the, the head of digital learning there and then started at RGS Worcester two years ago as the director of innovation. We're, as you said, a family of four schools, which is a senior school where I'm based. But I work across all four schools. We've got uh, RGS The Grange, which is a prep school, uh, just two miles out of town. Uh, RGS Springfield, which is another prep school, which is less than a mile away. And RGS Dodderhill, which, was, which is a, a girls' school, although boys are starting there in Key Stage 1 and 2 in September. And they are the newest members of the RGS Worcester family, only joining pretty much when I joined two years ago. And uh, all four schools have got a one-to-one -one iPad deployment from reception to uh, year six in the prep schools and from reception to year 11 in uh, Dodderhill and to year 13 here from year seven. All the teachers have got... MacBooks and iPads, which I think is quite unusual. We're, we're very lucky in that regard, and no, we appreciate yeah. that not all schools are able to, 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 to provide equipment on that scale. Uh, but we've to make all these things work, we obviously need a, a, a robust and powerful infrastructure, which we've got. So I've got a good team of, of, of IT technicians and, and network managers that, that work with me, and uh, we make sure that everything, everything is up and running and, and working as it should be. In terms of workflow, we, I think like most schools, when we first adopted iPads, had a myriad of different apps that everyone was using for you no know, spelling to uh, making films and podcasts and all sorts of different stuff. Now we've got to narrow it down to, to, to a much more, um, uh, a much smaller workflow. And uh, the, the main apps we use are Shobi, which is yeah. probably why uh, I've been invited to, to speak to you. But we also so use... We have We've also invited people that don't use Shobi as well, but absolutely, feel free to plug Shobi in, no problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> but we, 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 we use Shobi in all four schools, and uh, we also use Google, uh, but we also use Apple, Apple iPads, obviously. So we're, we're an Apple Distinguished School uh, as well, which is a recognition for our leadership, for our innovation, and for our digital culture. We've been an Apple Distinguished School since 2017, and... Uh, uh, that, and we, so therefore, we've got good links with these companies as well. But we, we, we like to think we're kind of at the forefront of, of, of digital technology, but without taking things for granted, without you know, you know, knowing that there's plenty to learn from other schools and other educators and, and other people that can, can help and guide us. So we're in a good place. And I think uh, that the, the trajectory to the future is good as well. But it takes, as you know, more than just uh, uh, one or two people to, to make sure that that happens. So, so something that I'd kind of like to dig in a little bit there, right? Um, you, you said something quite interesting. You're at Apple Distinguished School. You're using iPads, but you're also using Google and you're also using Shobi. How does all of that kind of fit together? Because I think that quite often there can be misconceptions out there. You're an Apple Distinguished School. That means everything you use is only Apple um, and, and nothing else. So how... How are you kind of consolidating that together along with, you know, Google and Shobi and Apple technology? How does that all come together? That's a great question. And I suppose what we would, what we think and what, in fact, what we, you know, we, we, we hold in high regard is that we don't use the technology for the sake of it. So, for example, with the Apple iPads, we are uh, content that they are the best devices you can have in schools at this point in time. Therefore, we use them. Uh, we are happy that Shobi provides us with the best workflow experience that we can get. So therefore, we use Shobi. Uh, and in terms of using Google, we use Google for our uh, uh, you know, for, for storage, etc. Use Google Drive for, for file sharing. And there's nothing that we know of that does anything better than Google. Because they all sync very, very well, uh, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's, if it's, 
made by a different company as long as it works. And if it stopped working, for example, if there was uh, repeated issues with any of those three platforms that was that were at the you know, detriment to learning, we would very quickly change our minds and look elsewhere because we, we want to provide the best possible learning experiences for our children uh, and for our parents. And therefore, we, we look for the best products out there. That, that's that's kind of really, really interesting and actually quite powerful as well, because um, I think that sometimes um, when schools are potentially thinking about a strategy or moving down this route, um, I think quite often people feel the need to choose, like, am I going to go Microsoft? Or am I going to go Google? Or am I going to go Apple? But actually, um, there is that opportunity to kind of pick the best that you feel for your organization um, is going to be, you know, give you the, the best possible experience, you know. Um, and, and for me, what's been kind of interesting in some of the projects that I've been involved with is Shobi is very much assessment and feedback. It's not trying to do email. It's not trying to do storage. It's not trying. It's, it's very much workflow. Um, I think you're right about the, the iPad uh, aspect. That's kind of, again, kind of been quite interesting because it's a mobile tool, camera on the back the ability to scan, photocopy, all that kind of stuff. There's some significant impacts around that. And of course, schools today need a cloud-based infrastructure, you know, so that, that, that you know, I, I remember the days when we had um, servers in the room and like email would get kind of like transferred and updated on servers and so on. And you wouldn't see technicians for days because they would just be buried in cables, wires and boxes uh, and so on. And, Actually, things have really kind of moved on uh, from that time. So, so my, my next kind of, uh, I suppose, question would be, okay, so you've got the infrastructure, you've got a degree of consistency and some great tools. What does the learning experience look like? What can happen now, you know, that, that wasn't possible in the past? What was it like through COVID as, far as, as kind of the, the learning experience is concerned? Um, just tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So, uh, because we we are a school, well, four schools that go right from uh, reception to year thirteen, we use the iPad, we use Shobi, we use the apps, etc., in a whole host of different ways. So, I could I could talk for hours on that subject about the difference between what goes on in nursery, uh, you know, using using the camera, as you said, to take pictures of wildlife uh, and mark it up, right up to to you know. Uh, a-level science, where we're using the completely different sorts of tools attached to the iPad to measure uh, heat and sound and light, etc. So with all these options, I mean, there's there's not many things you you can't do. But what we what we I suppose the common theme right from the right from nursery right up to year thirteen is doing things not for the sake of it, but because it adds value. Uh, and I suppose that's the easy way of answering that question. It's like you know whatever whatever subject you walk into, uh, you won't always see iPads being used. If, if, if you can do the uh, work without using an iPad perfectly happily and the kids are engaged and learning's taking place, then, then that's absolutely fine as far as we're concerned. However, as you know, this, the same old stuff, uh, it's, it's, it's true. It, it, there's things you can't do without an iPad, and therefore that's when it comes into its own. Uh, Shobi, I know you, you talked about Shobi being a, a workflow app. Uh, there are actually cases of teachers working out quite cool ways of making it a, 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 an app for... Um, for submitting work, obviously, but also for, for children to create work and leave their own audio feedback and visual feedback, etc. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah. I, I suppose the common theme would be that then. It's, it's, it's that meaningful innovation. It's that meaningful use of the device. Now, the, the second part of your question talks about COVID and how that looked here. Well, yeah. we are incredibly proud of how we, we, we dealt with uh, lockdown. We talk, people, well, I'm, I'm going to use the word lockdown, not school closure, because uh, the, the gates might have been shut, but... Uh, learning was continuing here uh, uh, as it would have done if the kids had been here. Obviously, it's not the same. You don't become a teacher to sit behind a computer screen all day and talk to people uh, uh, through FaceTime or through Google Meet, etc. But However, we had to, uh, and therefore we, we spent three weeks just readjusting what we did. But because of the, the culturization of, uh, the, the, of iPads, of, of our digital uh, systems, the teachers were already skilled enough and confident enough to make that move. Now, that's not to say they weren't worried, because we all were, but they dealt with it extremely well. We, uh, I'm not just saying this um, from uh, my own sort of thoughts. We've actually got data on this as well. We collected data. Oh, really? from, 
Yeah, really powerful data from both lockdowns. We thought it'd be really valuable after lockdown one to see what we did, not because not to you know to, to go singing how great we are, but to learn from what we did well and what we did wrong. Because we kind of guessed, like most people did, this wouldn't be the, the last time we locked down. And the data was, was was extremely powerful. We looked at the school day, how that could that could be adjusted, the amount of homework, the amount of lessons, the interactivity, et cetera. So by the time second lockdown came, we were able to make some slight changes and do things even better. So the, 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 the data we collected was triangulated. So we had parents, teachers, pupils, telling us uh, all sorts of information. That information was actually used by um, uh, the the EdTech uh, Foundation uh, as part of their EdTech 25 report, which was sent to the Educational Select Committee as an indication of how important uh, a school with a pre-existing digital culture uh, was able to mitigate learning loss, uh, basically providing evidence that if you if you had the right digi digital infrastructure before lockdown, you could cope with remote learning much better than otherwise. So we we you know. We're so happy we're back at school now, but at the same time, our data also showed us that all those three triangulated groups all agreed that progress had continued as it should do, even with lockdown. That, that's that's quite significant, I suppose, in many ways. Um, I think I think that um, you know, there's always that question. Um, about the haves and have nots, yeah. That's kind of that's a that's a discussion that happens a lot in education in, in the UK. Um, the reality is is that the approach that you've just described is something that you know a lot of state schools have also kind of implemented and followed. And I think that there's there's opportunity here and there's kind of data information, there's relevance here in that kind of says that you know, the, the opportunity to kind of balance out inequities and so on is possible, you know, um, by providing access to the right kind of tools, uh, by having a discussion around the, the, the type of workflow, uh, by having a strategy um, that actually, you know, any school could potentially adopt, you know, and, and I think there's some real kind of uh, power um, in understanding that. Um, so let me ask you about challenges, right? Um, I think that, you know, with independent schools, sometimes um, for people outside that circle, they may feel actually there are no challenges and it's all hunky-dory and everything's good. You know, um, what kind of challenges um, do, you, do you face as RGS Worcester, as schools, what kind as, as typically independent, might not be able to speak for all independent schools, but, you know, um, what are the challenges do you, would you say that, you know, independent schools uh, have to face? I suppose there's the challenge of expectation, uh, as you just described. There's a there's a preconception of of what a private education looks like, uh, and it's making sure that those expectations are met. Uh, you know, just as any other school in the UK, we, we face inspection as well, and, and, and inspection will look at safeguarding, or look at uh, people well-being, staff well-being, etc. Uh, and although there may be differences in resources, certainly between some state schools and independent schools, there's there shouldn't be a difference in expectation, there shouldn't be a difference in well-being, and there shouldn't be a difference in safeguarding. Um, and uh, so it, you know, we need to take, make, well, make sure that all the, all the correct uh, uh, measures are taken to ensure these things are done well. Uh, of course, there's, 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 a, there's a difference also sometimes with, with the resources in terms of what the teachers are able to, to get. But there's not a difference in the training that's required to make these things work. So we've got to be uh, up, to, up to speed with professional development. And certainly if we're asking teachers to use these devices to a level that makes, makes, the, makes the investment worthwhile, then we need to make sure that the training is, is put in place as well. Now, it's interesting what you said at the start of this about the haves and have nots. We do. We are just wish that are extremely aware of making sure we have outreach programs to uh, local state schools. Uh, to uh, uh, schools further afield as well, and to do that, we we we, you know, we we look around our staff body, for example, and one of our, our members of the SLT is a governor at a state school. So we looked at how we could support them during lockdown. We gave them some iPads. Uh, we gave them training to go with those iPads, and that training is now continuing as well because they started that journey. There's uh, there's there's other pockets of that as well. We asked um, parents and teachers to help support 
a, uh, a another charity that was collecting resources to give to schools. So we, we, we got devices that way as well. And even with, with things like our RTC, uh, for those of you who don't know what an RTC is, it's an it's a Apple regional training center. Uh, these we've, we've made obviously available online. We've, we've, we've put them out to local, local state schools, local academies, and show people and share the resources that we've used to make sure our remote learning was successful and offered our services a bit like the EdTech 50, sorry, the EdTech, um, uh, so what are they called? The, the EdTech I think schools, yeah. Demonstrator schools. We've, we've tried to emulate what they're doing. I know you had Ty Goddard on here yesterday. Yeah, that's right. That's we're, right. We're, big, we're big fans of Ty, uh, and uh, we've, we've offered our services to, um, to, to to schools just to help out where we can because you know we're, we're all in it together. And, and I like to think RGS Worcester is uh, more than aware of its uh, you know its, its successes, uh, but it's also more than willing to to share them. So, so the courses and just. Because we got a we've got a, a UK audience, we'll probably have an international audience as well. But in terms of the regional training center, those courses are all free. Anybody can attend. Are they, are they they're online? How how do they work? Yeah, so so we market them uh, online uh, from our Facebook account, our Twitter account, our LinkedIn account. Uh, they there's a, there's an RTC website which is run by Apple, uh, and if you go onto that website, you can actually see all the different uh, things that are taking place at RTC events across. Uh, the country and beyond to be to part of the requirement of being an Apple distinguished school is that you have to be an RTC as well. Uh, and in terms of uh, they're obviously always free, but in terms of getting access to them, we use Eventbrite, and you can you, know, you can go onto Eventbrite uh, and you can subscribe to those ones. Sometimes, obviously, previous to COVID, we had them in person for the so for the international audience. We're more than happy for you to, to fly over and join us. But it, it, we, we, what we're trying to do is, is to probably keep those online options going now. And certainly, if they are even in person, we can record events quite easily, and we can share those videos, and we can share those outcomes online. Brilliant, brilliant, really good. And I think I think there's some real kind of opportunities there for people to join in. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that we've certainly discovered as kind of part of... Um, the lockdown or kind of, you know, the, the fact that, you know, the world is now seeing education as um, something that's a lot more accessible. So like today's conference, there'll be people joining from many different parts of the world. Um, whereas in the past, people tend to sometimes, even with online stuff, they tend to stick to like what's going on in their own country. And I think that's great. And I think educators have really stepped up to that. Um, and I think the opportunity for people to join online courses, whether that's at the RTC, whether that's at EdTech Demonstrator Schools and so on, I think that opportunity is there. Um, and the ability to kind of share best practice is going to be there as well. Um, so just kind of moving on from there, um, in terms of parental engagement, right, what what does that kind of look like at RGS Worcester? How do you engage parents um, in that kind of approach? So from the start of the whole digital learning program, which is, we call it the DLP, parents have been informed about the plans um, and about the reasons behind the plans as well. That's, that's easy to do though. What's made the difference is, is getting parents in to school at the start of the school year, delivering presentations and actually giving new parents the opportunity to, to get their hands on devices and look at them. Obviously, with COVID, that's, that's impossible. But making sure that um, you know, they get to see and, and understand why those workflows are important, what advantages they bring and uh, why their children should come to RGS Worcester opposed to another school nearby, which doesn't have the same digital infrastructure or the same uh, uh, training resources, resources in terms of devices and a workflow. So we we, we constantly put things out through, uh, through, through through marketing, but again, the marketing is one thing. Actually, getting to, you know, parents to see these things in action has made a huge a huge difference. So we have open days, for example. Uh, one just happened on Saturday, uh, and during the open day, normally parents would get to see the classrooms. And in those classrooms, children would be using iPads, as we said before, where they add value to learning. So new parents would see that. Existing parents, well, we like to think that when children get their, uh, their you know, when they get home and they've got their homework to do and they talk about their school day, a lot of the focus will be on the, the digital side of things. 
But again, what you've got to make sure is that the parents don't assume that children come to RGS Worcester and simply spend all day staring at an iPad, because that's so far from the truth. It, it, it's that whole meaningful use of it uh, that's really important. But we've got, you know, we, we did, we've got a huge focus on sports, a huge focus on drama and the arts, which can use technology, but don't have to. Uh, we've got yeah. forest schools at the prep schools. Uh, we've got forest school at Dodderhill. And uh, we even have a non-screen day where actually we, we, we turn off all the screens across the schools and, and focus on, on uh, time away from the screen, which I think is quite important as well. So I think the messaging that parents get is, 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 is very accurate, really. It's an accurate portrayal of what we do at the school. And uh, uh, they get an opportunity to see it in action on open days uh, through presentations at the start of the school year. And uh, also uh, when they see their children at school, at home, uh, using these devices, uh, hopefully they get a, a good picture of why an IGS education does these things well. Now, again, another thing I haven't mentioned is that we, we actually, in terms of our deployment, ask parents to provide the, the iPads. So it's not, it's not, they're not school provided devices, which adds an extra element in there uh, yeah. because parents have to make that investment in the device as well. So Again, we, we need to make sure that the, the, the customer, the parent experience is, is really positive from the start. So again, any support, we've got a website where uh, we, we, we constantly post links and updates about how to use the, the systems well. And a massive thing for parents is safety and security. So we always make sure that uh, parents are aware of our MDM, which is our mobile device management system. We use Jamf for that, which means as soon as children hit our network, uh, all the apps we don't want on the devices disappear. We've got really, really good uh, firewall, uh, uh, Fortinet, that blocks any inappropriate searches. We use Apple Classroom, which I love. It's like a teaching superpower. Um, you can, you know, once teachers get their heads around that, once parents see these things in action, they realize that we've got the right sort of digital culture uh, at RGSW to use these devices in really, really positive ways. Yeah, I, th I think there are tools that exist that typically parents are just come. They just wouldn't know because there's no need for them to know. I remember doing a, a parent session once um, and um, the school was uh, going to be using Shobi. They were going to be using iPad. And we did like a bit of a demonstration. And, and the, one of the key questions was uh, from a lot of the parents before the session was that, you know, what happens if the children are playing games in the classroom or what if they go off on something they're not supposed to and so on. So we actually did a, a demo of the classroom app you know, um, and, you know, we kind of showed th there's lots of different features on there that can be used for learning and, and collaboration. But there's this one really cool feature that teachers love and parents love even more. And that's the fact that you can hit the lock button and the I all the iPads just cut out. Right. So I kind of showed that and the parents were like, whoa, this is really good. Da -da 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 -da. Right at the end of the session. One of the one of the parents, a mum, came up to me and said that, is it possible for me to set this up at home? <laughs> and she said, you know, I want this for my husband so I can just kind of lock his computer when I need to kind of thing, which kind of uh, tickled me a little bit as well. But definitely um, the technology is there. And I know Jamf, for example, that's come on a long way in the way in which things can be managed. It's no longer the case that, you know, that you have to have a certain set of apps on the iPad, if, I, if I'm correct, um, all the time, like when they go home, other apps can appear and so on. And all of that can be managed kind of quite easily, which is pretty powerful, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's funny you say that about Apple Classroom as well. My, my second favorite feature behind the lock button is the uh, end class button. When you press <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you get, yeah. you get the, every app that's been used who yeah. uses it and when? So if if child A decided to pop onto Bet three six five and stick a tenner on the three ten at Cheltenham halfway through your lesson, <laughs> you know exactly who it was, when they did it, and they have quite a lot of explaining to do. So once they understand that teachers can do that, they tend to focus very much on their work. Yeah, yeah, and that's absolutely the case. That's that's actually quite powerful. That is that is a really really good feature, and you can tap on the student's name, and it just shows you all the apps that they've been on in your lesson and so on. Uh, that, and I think that's one of the things that technology provides, right? It provides a degree of transparency that really uh, we just didn't have in the past. Um, 
John, I'm going to kind of finish there. I'm going to say thank you very much um, for taking the time out and kind of sharing your thoughts um, and your ideas as well. If people want to sign up to your RTC courses, if they want to know more um, about what you are offering out there for, for the world um, and, and educators everywhere to kind of join on to your courses and so on, where do they go? Uh, your Twitter handle's on there, so obviously they could go onto Twitter and have a look at that. But where else can they go to kind of find out about uh, and sign up potentially for for training as well? Tell you what, what's, what, what I think the best thing to do if I if I if people follow me on Twitter or catch me on Twitter, if I post a link on that, then people could just click on the link and go that way. We use we use the RTC site. We've got our own site as well. So if I just put a little little thing on Twitter or or LinkedIn or something or both, then yeah. people could yeah. see it that way. But um, it, we, it's been an absolute pleasure, Abdul. Um, I, I feel like we could continue talking. Uh, but I, 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 I wonder, the, you know, I'm, we I'm hoping. I'm Time hoping we meet again soon. I'm hoping we meet again soon. Um, yeah. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, John. Thanks for taking the time out. Take care. Goodbye. And just for people that are watching, one other thing I would like to mention tonight at 7.30 p.m., um, join the, the EdTech chat on Twitter um, if, with Matt Pullen. So if you follow Matt, um, his Twitter handle is at M-A-T-6453, yeah, at Matt6453. And there's going to be kind of like a Twitter chat um, about Shobi and, and so on. Educators from all over the world will be joining. That's 7.30 p.m. tonight, UK time. So feel free to, to kind of continue the conversation and, and join in there. Thank you very much. And everyone be safe and see you soon. Goodbye.